Hello, welcome to this uh, lecture on fiction of the Indian independence period. This period is a time of positive awakening and an awareness of the evils of Western civilization and modernization uh, crept into literature. Many novelists displayed the spirit of secularism and uh, diasporic writing became prominent. Many Indian writers began to travel abroad and they settled abroad and began to write from there. There was a quest for new values and national consciousness. Many people talked about historical events such as the partition, the communal riots, uh, emergency, uh, problem of casteism, subjugation of women, etc. And all the novelists employed realism. The three great novelists of the earliest uh, independence period is the big three. They are Mulk Rajanand, R. K. Narayan and Raja Rao. Mulk Rajanand was from Punjab and he was called uh, the Charles Dickens of India because of his humanitarian compassion for the downtrodden. R. K. Narayan depicted rural idyllic life disturbed by foreign elements. In many of R. K. Narayan's novels, there is a perfect Malgudi life, village life that is disturbed by some outsiders coming. And uh, the, uh, Raja Rao um, uh, talked about Gandhism, talked about metaphysics and philosophy, spiritual, spirituality, quite a lot. Mulk Rajanand uh, started his oeuvre career with the 1935 book, The Untouchable. The Untouchable talks about one day in the life of Baka, a bhangi toilet cleaner boy. Lots of things go wrong in his uh, day. And starting from his own father, Laka, throws him out of the house. His sister, Sohini, is, uh, you know, troubled by the village priest. He tries to sexually abuse her. He gets a hockey stick and plays hockey. But uh, for uh, get getting a boy injured, Baka is unfairly blamed. And uh, he also sees... Gandhi and his, he listens to Gandhi's lecture on that day about equality and Harijan's uh, emancipation. Uh, he also hear, hears about a toilet cleaning system, a flush system that we all know of, but in those days it was new. That would probably end the Bhangi toilet cleaning caste completely. And then he also hears about uh, the Salvation Army and Christianity. From, uh, from Colonel Hutchinson, the Salvationist. So after all these things happen, he thinks that there are three solutions to his problem of caste. One is Christianity. The other is Gandhism. And the third, in a very funny way, Mulk Rajanan says, is the flush system. <laughs> that is the story of the untouchable. Equally famous is Cooley from 1936. Munnu and Ofid. A 14-year-old boy undergoes a lot of hardships, all because of poverty and caste. And at the end, he dies of tuberculosis. That is the story of Cooley. And uh, many of his other novels are also based on caste and other social evils, such as uh, Three Leaves and a, uh, and a Bud. Three Leaves and a Bud. Sorry, Two Leaves and a Bud. <laughs> Three, uh, two Leaves and a Bud uh, is about the story of Gangu. Uh, Punjabi who lives in the Assam tea plantation and works there and he tries to save his daughter from being abused by the uh, you know authority the manager and uh, Bang Gangu's hardships Gangu is like the tea shoots very vulnerable and tender that is another important novel the barber's trade union is about how Chandu teaches the villagers a lesson by uh, refusing to work for them and going, getting a bicycle, he and the other barbers go and work in the town. All the villagers grow their beards and, uh, you know, they have a tough time. They come to uh, accept Gangu's, sorry, Chandu's terms. Then there is R.K. Narayan. Before I turn to R.K. Narayan, remember Mulkra Janand also wrote Lalu Trilogy about Lal Singh, a Punjabi uh, farmer. The Village Across the Black Waters and The Sword and the Sickle are the three novels of Lalu Trilogy. 
and he has also written uh, autobiographies. He wanted to write seven autobiographies based on the seven ages of man from Shakespeare, but he wrote only four. R. K. Narayan was born in 1906 and here most of his novels are set in the fictional village of Malgudi. And R. K. Narayan was the first recipient of the Sahitya Academy Award in English. R. K. Narayan's first three novels form a trilogy, Swami and Friends, The Bachelor of Arts, The English Teacher. Swami and Friends is the story of uh, Swami and his friends Mani, Rajam. The Bachelor of Arts is the story of uh, Krishnan. Sorry, Chandran. Krishnan is an English teacher. Chandran is falling in love, but he cannot marry that girl. So later he goes away from his family, tries to lead an ascetic life and then comes back, marries another girl that his mother chooses and falls in love with her. So these are about the problems of youth. And the English teacher is about Krishnan who gets married and his wife dies and he starts communicating with his wife. This is a reenactment of the Satyavan Savitri myth. Like Savitri brings back Satyavan spirit. Krishnan brings back the spirit of his wife. This was based on uh, R.K. Narayan's own losing his own wife Rajam. R.K. Narayan is very well known for another novel, The Guide, 1958. The guide is the story of Raju. There is a very poor boy Raju growing up near the railways. He's called Railway Raju. And uh, he, as he grows up, he becomes a tourist guide. And he cheats people. Uh, you know, he's a uh, small scale con, con man. Then he meets a woman called Rosie. Her husband is a very strict man. There is a a problem in their marital relationship also and uh, this man uh, Raju calls him Marco because he looks like Marco Polo dressed like a uh, an explorer. Rosie he uh, you know ch changes Rosie uh, Rosie's career and life he helps her to become a dancer and she becomes Nalini rich and famous. At this time Raju loves her but she is devoted to her husband who has left her. Raju then forges a check, petty crime, and she is put in, he is put in prison for a few months. And when he leaves there, he becomes a sadhu in a village, accidentally. And there he really changes from a con man and a tourist guide. He now becomes a spiritual guide of the people of that village. And this is also like metaphorical of uh, India's concerns with uh, social uh, problems and uh, spirituality. And uh, there is another important novel, The Man Eater of Malgudi, where Nadaraj is a printer, he rents a room to Vasu. Vasu is a taxidermist. His job is to stuff wild animals. He's a poacher. He steals wild animals. And he becomes like a terrorist. He terrorizes the people of Malgudi. I told you the foreign element terrorizing uh, idyllic village life. That is a very common theme in R.K. Narayan. And uh, uh, Vasu ultimately dies of his own doing. He hits a mosquito on his temple and ruptures a vein and dies. At the beginning of that novel, R.K. Narayan uh, has already said that Asuras or demons will bring about their own downfall by themselves. This is allegorically referring to the colonial period and the colonial masters. The colonizers will bring about their own downfall. That is the meaning. The talkative man, waiting for Mahatma, the financial expert, the dark room are all other important novels by R.K. Narayan. Waiting for Mahatma is an allegory of India and its independence movement. The story of Sri Ram and Bharati, where Bharati is India, Sri Ram is Mahatma Gandhi. Talk about Mahatma Gandhi, the first novel by Raja Rao, published in 1938 is Kantapura, which is a Gandhi Purana. Kantapura is told in the oral storytelling technique. It is like a Harikatha. 
and uh, it tells the story of a village under murti their leader turning to gandhism the british people try to suppress their uh, gandhian ideology but eventually the whole village is burned but they pursue in their gandhian ideology that is the story of kantapura there are so many characters and little little elements that you need to know please do some reading on your own like i always say the next novel by raja rao came many years later that is the serpent and the rope the serpent and the rope came in 1960 you know the saying in villages we we have the ethnic saying you see a rope sorry you see something and you think it is a rope but it is actually a serpent so serpent and the rope means illusion and reality did you understand rama swami is the protagonist rama he is a brahmin and according to brahmanism uh the main purpose of life is quest for salvation for the divine and your wife should be a partner in that together husband and wife should together uh, be in their quest for salvation wife is a partner rama swami goes to france and marries madeline madeline is a western woman she is not like a partner to rama swami she is an individual she is interested in her own salvation and rama swami gets frustrated then he falls in love with an indian woman savitri but savitri is already somebody else's wife rama even though he finds the ideal partner in savitri does not pursue that relationship uh, finally he gets makes savitri go back to her husband that is the story of the spiritual quest of rama in serpent and the rope cat and shakespeare is subtitled a tale of modern india it is a funny tale there is a streak of humor in all these novels it is a funny tale about ramakrishna pai and govindan nair and i'm not going into all these stories please look up a little bit on your own comrade kirillov which draws the title from dostoevsky the chess master and his moves are other novels pabani bhatacharya another first generation indian writer who wrote during the independence movement is the next writer we are talking about he employed a social realism and he wrote about a lot of social events and evils of that time so many hungers his famous novel was published in 1947 like the title suggests it is not only about the hunger for food it is also about other hungers the protagonist is kajoli he who rides a tiger is another important novel by bhavani bhatacharya the next writer is g v desani he wrote a ulysses like novel which is all about h hatter it is a story of a, an anglo malay man in search of wisdom and enlightenment there is atia hussein who wrote sunlight on a broken column the title is taken from t s eliot's hollow men and sunlight on a broken column is a partition novel manohar malgonkar another important writer he is from maharashtra and if, do you know he was born into a royal family in maharashtra and manohar malgonkar also fought in the army he was a lieutenant colonel and many of his novels are based on his adventures novels like distant drum a combat of shadows very famous is a bend in the ganges a bend in the ganges what would that mean ganges is flowing like this a bend in the ganges would mean partition right partition then there is k a abbas k a abbas was a film director he was the uh, screenplay writer and director of movies like avara shree 420 Meranam Joker but he was also a novelist and uh, he wrote uh, Inquilab a major novel political novel he has also written plays and short stories Kamala Markandeya was another first generation indian writer she uh, lived abroad and uh, she has written a lot about east west encounter Kamala Markandeya 
wrote about the clash of values in India, the urban-rural divide, her major uh, novel, Nectar in a Sieve, has its title taken from uh, Coleridge's poem, Work Without Hope. It is set in India during a period of intense urban development. We uh, see a couple, Rukmini and Nathan. They get married. They are villagers. They get married and their struggles as uh, they begin to live in the city. They have children. Their struggles. It is one saga of struggles. Which novel did I talk about? Nectar in a Sieve. A handful of rice is about a famine that actually happened and uh, Ravi, the protagonist, is living through the famine and this famine turns out to be actually man-made. Another novelist is Nayantara Segal. Nayantara Segal was the daughter of Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. That means she was from the Gandhi family, Nehru family that is. And uh, she also naturally wrote about politics a lot. Her famous novel is Rich Like Us. It is a story centering on two women, Sonali and Rose. Rose is a British woman, the wife of Ram living in India. And Sonali is their uh, niece, a uh, woman in the civil services. Major novels by, other novels by Nayantara Segal. A Time to be Happy, This Time of Morning, Mistaken Identity. Important. Chaman Nahal wrote the Gandhi Quartet, which includes the famous novel, Azadi. Ruth Pravar Jhabwala was not even Indian. She was German born. She married an Indian and she came and lived in India. She won the Booker Prize for us for the novel Heat and Dust. Heat and Dust is also the story of two women. Olivia is a woman who used to live in India. Her great granddaughter Sabina is uh, trying to write the story of Olivia. Sorry, Sabina is not in this novel. It is an unnamed uh, narrator. The great granddaughter is unnamed. Sabina is in one novel by Margaret Atwood. Uh, well, you can look it up yourself. I don't remember. Now, Heat and Dust is what I was talking about. The Ruth Pravar Jabwala has written novels, other novels like A Backward Place. Um, My Nine Lives, one of her latest, recent, I mean, last novels. So that is about the first generation Indian novelist who wrote at the time of independence. This is just a skeleton, just an overview. Please do your own reading and research. Thank you very much.